I must say, friends, this is a real unusual sight. Oh yes, it most certainly is, my dear Twilight. I do hope you're not referring to the cast of this sketch, are you? Because if you are, I am taking right back what I just said. Why that? Are y'all for real, Twilight? You can't seriously believe that this here constellation with just us would be anything out of the ordinary. I wouldn't even call it not stale and overused anymore. To voir, the five of us just standing around and having a conversation about some randomly picked topics about the Zalporn as a male protagonist. Yeah, and don't think we didn't see what you're doing with all this. Getting us to argue over this very thing just to have a way of starting the episode. These intros used to be a lot smoother as well. Don't put the blame on me, it wasn't my idea. It was his. And not my fault either. Because believe it or not, despite Robot is giving me the instruction to do exactly what you just pointed out, he did disregard something very important. And whatever would that be? The fact that all your complaints were completely unjustified. Because if you had taken the time to look around for one second before indulging in another one of our pointless fights, you would have noticed that it isn't just five of us standing here. What? What are you saying? Well, just have a very observant look around you, and you might notice the big difference from usual. The one our viewers probably noticed from the very start, since they had a visual presentation of our whole picture to help them see. Um, um, let's see then. Hmm, all right. We have you, Twilight. Fluttershy, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, War, and last week, there's Pinkie Pie. War, Pinkie Pie? What? But, but how is this possible? You're never here. Not quite, Rarity. I used to be never here. But it looks like things have changed along with the year. Wow, you can say that at this. I never would have expected to see you again so soon after those specials. To be honest, I was pretty surprised as well. I had actually been contemplating on getting the terrarium out again, when suddenly Robot has crashed through the roof. At first I jumped away in panic because I thought he was just there to squash me again, but he hadn't even aimed for me. After he landed, he just turned his head to me and handed me a letter. It was a certificate of approval, as he called it, in which he officially welcomed me into the main cast again. Wow, that sounds great, Pinky. Oh yes? I'm sure these sketches can only improve if there is yet one more character to be mixed up in all this shit. It's not like it wasn't hard enough for Robotus to keep track of all our extreme personalities and everything we had going on as it was. No, sure. What's just to add one more? Well, on a somewhat positive side note, Pinky's addition will probably not make things all too complicated since she hardly has any personality to begin with. Yay! What is that supposed to mean? Oh, real, Pinky. It's just that you aren't exactly as well distinctive as the rest of us. All you seem to have to your personality as being the least indecent one of us. Well, I gotta say, Rarity, that was pretty rough. I feel like I should have been the one who said that. Are you jealous that it wasn't you who got to crush Pinky's spirit? Are you really that petty? Look, you know, I just meant that it's my thing to be mercilessly honest. It's got my element, ain't it? Oh, you guys really are such giant assholes. One just has to love you. But they kind of have a point, Pinky. Each of us have a very distinctive personality, in that we're all basically the same mean-spirited prick, while you are not at all different from your show character. Hmm, I see. That reminds me, I did want to make an effort in becoming a little more complex as you would call it. Even back when you visited me, but then suddenly that Agent Classified showed up and took the robot a sketch manner and just made the episode take a more in its direction. You forget that he also shot you. I really had to use all my strength in that moment to keep my composure. Oh, what is Luckily, that episode is on YouTube by now, so I can watch that scene as often as I need it. It always has me rolling on the floor. Oh, well, I guess this one's on me for expecting anything else. Glad you're so sensible, Pinky. So, Pinky, do you now want to settle on some cross character traits that redefine you as a pony? Um, I would like to, yes. And honestly, I'm kind of unsure about this ordeal. I had a few more moments to think about. What are you talking about? Are you afraid of getting cut off again by some random event that may or may not seriously injure or kill you? You know, you might call me paranoid for that, but actually, yes, indeed, I'm a little worried about beginning this topic. But I can hardly blame you, Pinky, but this feeling is completely misplaced. That's true. I mean, all the one hand you hate and classified, and he surely ain't coming back after the freedom from that lab. And besides him, there's only robotics himself. And since he was the one who invited you here, I don't think that he just did that to comedically kill you again. No, now that I said that out loud, it does actually sound exactly like something you would do. Um, thanks for trying to call me Applejack. That really helped. No, touch your tail again! Whoa, oh, what shit. is yo? Phew, thank God my tail is working again. What the hell was that? No idea. Did robot is trying to squash Pinky again? No, um, I don't think so. Wait, there's no robot is here. But what fell from the sky then? What the fuck 
What are you doing throwing bones at us? Pinky? Uh, yeah. She's here. Um, here. It's for you. For me? Hello? Hello, Pinky. This is me, Robot. Robot? What do you want from me? I'm just calling to make something clear. Students, I heard you better if they had just used this integration of you as others have for a college job. I am not. And I have no intention of harming you again. It's all now. Then why did you run down on me? I'm feeling a danger. Yeah, for someone to say. Well, I guess. Just love those funny books. Ah, this robot is more. What? What is it, Pinky? What does this robot is being robots? He just wanted to inform me that he didn't have any plans to harm me. By dropping a heavy old-fashioned telephone station from the sky to hit me on you. Like I said, Trina's is nature. Though I can't say for sure if he really did do it on purpose, or if he was just a good man. But the gist of it is that robot is seemingly won't interfere with our sketch. Any more than he by now has a... That's what I got from it. A rule. Then that means you're actually free to go, Pinky. You can get back to what you were going to do before. Developing some new character traits. Oh yes! Wonderful! Alright, Pinky. And what are your new traits now gonna be? Um, that is a very good question. I, uh, don't know. You what? How the fuck can you not know? You literally had me in three months in real time to think of something. I know, I know, and I can try, believe me. But nothing I came up with sat right with me. You all know what the way you are now is just how you've always actually been right. I'm unfortunately not that degrading and entertainingly awful of a pony. are comically mystic for this cast of horrid degenerates. Indeed. If y'all can't handle the way this group works, there ain't no place for you here. You mean, not necessarily. What do you mean? Well, like I already stated earlier, despite all of us still being kind of unique, we're basically all sharing the same antagonistic traits. All each of us are doing with each other is snarking, complaining, provoking, and fighting. Don't get me wrong, I can't get enough of that. It still could maybe use a little something else. Perhaps some sort of cat. You mean, that Pinky's more kind-hearted major? Yeah. Not only could she spice things up and prevent all of our sketches only ever being composed of just us bickering, she might also serve as a welcoming and rewarding catalyst for our hostilities. Sort of like a voluntary bed monkey. And the last one sounds inviting. Especially considering the fact that she has basically always been a butt monkey, at least in this world. Uh, that's true. It's not like I'm not used to you guys acting like total assholes. But at least you'll now focus it directly on me. Really, Pinky? You won't mind it at all? You know that most of the time you'd only be there for us to antagonize you. Oh, well, no, it's all right. I'm just glad to be here with you. It allows me to remember the times when we were recording our show. Everything was always so fun and nice back then. Shame it wasn't ever real. Oh, come now, Pinky. Stop being such a monkey. Besides, not everything is fake. I mean, we might all be horrible ponies who seemingly hate each other's guts, but we still spend so much time with each other. And none of us hesitated to join the rest when it came to stopping Celestia and saving the village. Perhaps we aren't so bad after all. I for one am just here for the crowd. Oh, shut up! Twilight! Twilight! I need to talk to you! Huh? Starlight? Well, ain't that an unusual choice of character? What's up, Purple Mane? Um, excuse me, but my name is not at all purple. You see, this is a very special kind of island. Enough with the fucking name. What is it, Starlight? And why are you here all alone? Where is your mayor friend you usually always cling to? Okay, first of all, we are not mayor friends, just normal platonic friends. And we most certainly always keep an appropriate distance from each other. Not once have we ever even touched in an erotic manner and definitely not shared any bodily intimacies. Any and all mention of such are nothing but rumors. No pony cares about your refusal to accept your lesbianism. Like, really? None of us give a single shit. So just can and tell me why the hell you came running like you did. You did want to tell us something, didn't you? Oh, all right then. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay, the reason why I'm in such a rush, and even came here without Trixie, is this. A letter. And what does it say? Here, you should read for yourself. Was it addressed at me? How come you already read it then? No, it was addressed at me. Interestingly, while it read my name, the address itself was that of Friendship School. Oh yes, that abandoned building near my castle. But like I just said, it was abandoned when our show ended and it was no longer needed. Why would anyone send letters there? Just read it, Twilight. Hmm, all right. What do we have here? My fairest principal, Starlight Lima. It must no doubt be inexplicable at first that you would be written to by the like of mine after such a life of pastime. 
it matters not whether my endeavors are traceable or not, as all that does is my own righteous cause. Without refusing dawdles, I shall proceed to my point. Friendship school is my place of origin, the very place my villain gained its birth. And so I find it an indisputable impertinence that it should be closed now. How am I to retain success when no pony can even see the humble beginnings of my career? All closed down and shut! Mark my words and pass them on! It will not be long before I set in motion my plan! I shall bring back forth all the glory that has been lost and all will see me for the acting prodigy I am! Yet the villain is only ever as good as her adversaries and so I incentivize you to be wary. In the meanest of time, you and all the main six shall be seen! Most kind of deference, a blustery is newest villain persona. Cozy doll. Post scriptum, directly to Twilight Sparkle and your friends. How did you, by the way, like the wording of this particular letter? I do hope it was not too old timey for you. Oh, you foolish ponies, you have not the shade of an idea of the kind of enemy you made. I'm sorry, what? What even was the content of this letter? To me, it was all just one giant salad of outdated expressions and needlessly complicated phrasings. Well, me being the language show off I am, I was able to gauge most of it. It was basically just an overly complicated way of threatening us. Some only going by the name of Cozy Doll, declaring to be our enemy. Huh? You sure it didn't say Cozy Blue? At least that's what the voice sounded like. No, no. Didn't you hear who signed it? Cozy Doll! To me, that sounds kind of like this one happened, villain. But I do wonder. Whoever might just be behind this persona. Oh, save it, Pinky. I know it's entertaining to keep up a mystery like that. But we didn't even need to hear that very distinctive voice. Normally only the viewer should have heard. He was so all so deep. Even without that, that name alone is so blatantly obvious. It would be an insult to anyone watching to even try to make that a mystery. Oh, fine. Party people. But even with the knowledge that it was clearly Cozy Girl who was behind this letter, this still explains nothing. It rather only creates more questions. What is she going on about her villainy? I thought she said that was just an act. And that will mention her old time in English, while undoubtedly true, really came off as unpredictable. She made it sound as if we ever had voiced any critique about it. Well, you did call her a pretentious one of the beauty when she went to the bathroom after the movie was fireworks. I did, sure. But she couldn't have heard that. What could she? I don't know. The walls of my castle are made of crystal, but that crystal was vomited out by a tree in the form of a rainbow. I myself never noticed anything about the walls being thin. But you did complain about constantly hearing Spike the Boogie of Worship Ritual, as he calls it. That's true, but that hardly had anything to do with the walls. Since that prick never closed his room door, he would even open it again when I went and closed it myself. For some reason, he deemed it really important that I noticed whenever he started beating the bishop to your only fan's profile picture. He probably expected me to tell you about it every single time, which ironically you just did. Thank you for the nightmare healing. Come on, you can't possibly be surprised by this. No, but I still didn't need to know what exactly his staffing aid was. Now I gotta change my profile picture. Maybe you could try putting some clothes on next time, you friend. Oh, what, Jack? Are we really gonna make that worn out joke about ponies being nude all the time yet again? I don't know. Are you? Maybe I should just put up a photo of you instead of Mark. Surely you could discourage my little pervert from disrespecting his queen in such manner. As well as drive away any and all subscribers. You do know what they say about their pony butts. Hmm, it's also true. Quite a pickle I'm in. Hey guys, I know you always get lost in the most random of topics and forget about whatever important thing is going on. But what are we now going to do about this letter? I mean, that was clearly a threat made against us. And I guess we should do something about that. No, if I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what we even should do. I mean, this might indeed be a threat in the announcement that sometime soon Cozy Glow is going to do something villainous with her new idol. But what are we supposed to do? Show this to the police? Oh, uh, well, that's what I would have figured. Oh, Pinky, you really are still very new to this whole sketch thing, so let me explain to you the simplest and most important rule about this. We never make any real progress by ourselves. Each and all times, we just let things happen to us. Anything other would be just artificial and unbelievable. So in other words, you willingly allow this villain to do whatever sick plan she has in mind just because it could be used for another episode? Y'all making it sound like it ain't the reasonable choice. Like, what are we even still live for besides making sketches? Without them, we wouldn't even have an online presence anymore. With our show being finished and a new Jet Horizon to replace us. At this point, we gotta take anything we can get. And on that mark, who would we even show this to? Like Twilight said, the police are out of 
the question basically any pony is. But why? Because you heard the way this letter was written. Only I was even barely able to grasp what the hell she meant to say. Most ponies aren't going to be able to make anything of these words. Come on, don't underestimate others like that. It wasn't that hard to understand. Well, no. What we all heard was just a halfway modernized version for the viewer. But if you look at the paper, you'll notice that even the letters are written in an old-fashioned manner. Not to mention the expressions themselves. What the heck is a snowy duster? Did she even use that correctly? And what does she mean by blethering? Who talks like that? So you see, there isn't really anything we can do about it. Surely we could go and try to find Cozy Glow ourselves. But why should we? Like I said, anything for another episode. Well, I guess. I gotta say, I have to get used to this whole thing. You'll get the hang of it eventually. The most important thing you need to remember is that it is never a bad time to make an unbelievable job. Speaking of which, hey, Jim. You with this one with a joke again! You know, Dash, this would have really annoyed me if I hadn't already seen it coming since the moment you opened your mouth. After all, we are at the end of the sketch. So are you not going to do it or not? <sighs> not no. Um, who's there? Not me. I'm out of here. Um, what is the joke now? I don't think there was any talking. <sighs> she really didn't digest it all too well what you said on Heart's Hey, you mean nothing by it. Proving to be a real enrichment to our past. Oh, now I get it! Or wait. Do I? 